What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video we will look at what is dropout regularization, why do we need regularization and at the end we will also implement dropout regularization completely from scratch in Python and also I will be providing you with the assignment that you can download from the link in the description box. In that assignment there will be blanks provided for you to implement and code it yourself and then you will be able to check your accuracy or the implement accuracy of your implementation. And also if you are new to this channel consider subscribing because I upload new machine learning videos like this where I provide the intuition behind the models as well as the complete mathematical details behind them and then we implement that in Python completely from scratch without using any built-in models. So hit the red subscribe button also hit the bell icon and without further ado let's get started with this video. Let's look at what is overfitting. Let's say we have this as our training data set and this as our test data set. Now it is possible that after training the model for a certain time, the decision boundary fits so well to this data set that it captures almost all the points in it. Now if we try to make the predictions on the test data set with this model, uh, we can see that it will not perform well on the test data set. Thus we will have high train accuracy but low test accuracy. And this condition is called the overfitting condition. What we ideally want is that a smooth curve like this that can fit well both in the training dataset as well as in the test dataset. So to do this, we use regularization. Let's say if you are using a neural network, then this highly complex non-linearity could be the result of having a very deep neural network which has many many hidden layers and each hidden layer has many neurons. So all the complex connections between each neuron will create a highly complex non-linear curve like this. So if we want to somehow increase the linearity or to have a smoother curve here, then we would want to have a slightly lesser number of neurons. What we can do is we can randomly drop some of the neurons at every iteration. So let's say 50% of the neurons in the hidden layers are dropped off randomly, then our network would look something like this. Here we have less number of neurons and thus the smaller network, thus it will be more linear. Also there is one more thing to note here and that is we will randomly drop some neurons at every iteration. Let's say these are the neurons that we dropped up in this iteration then in the next iteration we will again choose random neurons to drop. So in every iteration we will choose random neurons and will drop accordingly. And this can also help us in reducing overfitting. Let us see how. While training the neural network, what can happen is that some of these specific neurons might develop to hold certain features or certain patterns in them. And to emphasize or amplify these patterns, what our network will do is that it will increase the value of the weights associated with these neurons. So the you can say that the magnitude of these weights associated with these two neurons will be increased. Thus, our network might be able to strongly recognize these patterns but might fail to recognize the other patterns. Thus, it can lead to high overfitting. But as we are dropping off certain neurons randomly, what will happen is that instead of specifically increasing the weights associated with these certain neurons, what our network will do is that what our network will do is that it will evenly distribute its weight among all the weight parameters. So now this neuron can no longer rely on certain specific neurons to pass the information but it will have to spread out its weight among all the neurons. If you already know about L2 regularization then you will know that in this technique our aim was to reduce the values of W's so as to achieve certain values close to zero. Now as in the dropout the weights are spreaded among all the neurons this spreading will actually minimize the values of the W's. Thus dropout will also have the similar effect as of L2 regularization. Now let's look at the implementation details behind the dropout. We want to drop out certain neurons randomly and our neurons are represented by A's in our equations. To drop certain neurons in every A's, what we can do is that we can take a random matrix D which will be of the same shape as of the A and uh, let's say this D matrix is given by this and we can 
perform a d less than keep rate operation now this keep rate is nothing but the amount of neurons that we want to keep let's say for our example we take this as 0.8 then 80% of these values will be true while the 20% of these values will be false so all the values that are greater than 0.8 will be false while all the values that are less than 0.8 will be true now we have this matrix of dimension same as that of a but its values are only true and false so we can directly multiply this d matrix with our a matrix and thus drop the neurons randomly so in our equations of the forward propagations we will add these two additional equations in which we will get this d matrix by this equation and we will just multiply this d with a's and we will do this for all the hidden layers but not the output layer because we do not want to drop any neuron in our output layer as we have dropped off let's say 20% of the neurons we can say that the value of the a will be 20% less and this will affect our cost function so to keep the value of a close to the original value we will divide this with the keep rate so our final equations of the forward propagation will look like this and as we have dropped off certain neurons in the forward propagation we need to drop off the exact same number of neurons in the backward propagations as well so in our backward propagation equations we will need to add these two additional equations in which this da2 is nothing but this thing and we are just multiplying da2 with this if you have seen my previous videos then you will know that while doing the derivation of the backward propagation equations I was multiplying this term directly with this term but now I am separating it into the two steps so that we get this da2 matrix and we will multiply this da2 matrix with this d2 matrix that we generated for that iteration and then divide the entire value with the keep rate and we will do the same for the other hidden layer as well but not the output layer so these will be the two changes that we need to do in our forward propagation and backward propagation to implement the dropout. Here another important thing to note here is that we only implement dropout while training the neural network. We do not implement the dropout while making the test predictions. Thus dropout is implemented while training but not in the test. Okay so now we will be implementing dropout regularization in python. First we will train the model without regularization and see if it is overfitting or not. Then we will implement the regularization and see what effect does it take. Also I will provide you with the assignment that you can download from the link in the description box. In that assignment I have provided you with the blanks. You have to just fill out these blanks and implement the dropout regularization. And at the end you will also be able to check your accuracy uh, to see how it is performing. We will be training a neural network on this data set which looks something like this. It has only 211 data points in the training data set and 200 points in the test data set. The neural network has two hidden layers and I have already implemented this neural network. All this code you will find in the link in the description box with the assignment. And if you have watched my previous videos you will be easily able to understand the every single line of code that I have written here. If you haven't watched my video then I will provide its link down in the description box as well as you can find its link by clicking on the upper right corner. So we will train this model and see if it is overfitting or not. Do not worry about these NAN values and this warning. It is coming because our data set is way too small and the neural network is very complicated and way bigger. Also the number of features are only two which is much less for this big neural network. That's why the model is having hard time to train. But we will see if it is overfitting or not and as the data set is much lesser compared to the neural network, it should be overfitting and we can see it is overfitting. The training accuracy is over 98 but the test accuracy is only 93.5 and we can also see this complicated curve where the the decision boundary is trying to capture every single point and making this weird circles as well now when this same model or the same decision boundary is plotted on the test data set it is it is not going to perform well because the test data set is differently and this this decision boundary just doesn't fit there so we are looking for a smoother boundary that will fit well in both the training as well as test data set so let's see if dropout can help us in that or not.
So we need to add these thing in the forward propagation and this thing in the backward propagation. So we will quickly do that. So I have grabbed the forward propagation uh, function that I used earlier to train the model. Uh, now we want to add this term at every hidden layer, not the output layer. So we will be first having v1, which will be given by np dot random dot rand, and this will be of the same shape as of a1. Now what does this np dot random dot rand n does is that it creates a random matrix whose value will be between zero and one. So it will it will create a matrix of sh uh, shapes same as that of a1 whose values will be between 0 and 1 and the all the values will be assigned randomly. Then we will perform this d1 less than keep rate operation but we don't have the keep rate so we will have to pass it as a parameter here. Also I want to change this name as with dropout. Now we want to multiply d1 which will be a layer of true or false with a1 and then finally divide a1 with keep rate okay that's done now we will do the similar thing for a2 okay so our forward propagation is done we will need to pass this layer mask d1 uh, along with in this cache because we also want to apply the same mask in the backward propagation as well. So we'll grab this D1 through this cache list uh, in our backward propagation. So our forward propagation is done. Now let's implement the backward propagation. And in this cache that we passed here, we also pass this layer mask D1. So we will also have to grab it here and then we just have da2 here and we want to multiply da2 with the layer mask d2 and then divide da2 with keep rate same thing for da1 and our backward propagation is also done now we just have to update our final model and we can test the dropout. I grab the model from the above, we will pass keep rate here and default I will set 2.85 and make changes here and pass keep rate and that's it we are all good to go we can test the dropout now. Pass this keep rate as well. Let's see how it is plotting now. We can see that uh, the test accuracy has increased and the model is still a bit complicated but not as complicated as it was before. Now you can play around with the value of the keep rate to see what effect does it take. Uh, let me make this 0.6 and train the model again. Uh, if the keep rate value is equal to 1 then the regularization effect will be cancelled out because it means that we are keeping all the neurons and we are not dropping any neuron. So lesser the keep rate value, smoother will be the curve so more regularization effect will take place and higher the keep rate value maximum it should be 1 only. Uh, the lesser the uh, regularizing effect will be there. Also do not worry about these NANs because it is coming because we have a way to less features and data compared to the complexity of the model. We can see now the curve is much smoother and it is fitting both appropriately in the test as well as training data set. Now this was a demonstration with a very small data set which has only two features but let's say if we are training with a lot of features and a very complicated neural network then the regularization will definitely help a lot in overcoming uh, the overfitting and thus improving the model performance. So I hope you found this video valuable if so then hit the like button also share it among your friends this will be a great help for me if you have any suggestion then do let me know in the comments down below
and next week i will be back with another machine learning video just like this so i see you in the next one